In this video, I'm gonna show you how to take your boring, uninspired WooCommerce My Account page, which probably looks something like this, boring, right? There's not much to it. And with just a few minutes of your time and effort, you're gonna be able to make it look like this. Well, this is actually what I made mine look like. You're gonna be able to make yours look like however you wanna make it look, because I'm gonna show you how to unlock the My Account page, and you could use your page building tool, whichever one that it is, in order to create whatever you're inspired to create obviously this is what I was inspired to create uh, it's kind of basic so don't judge it based on my design skills I'm gonna show you how to do it all in this video and check this out these buttons actually do stuff I can click right here and see my recent orders and then your customers can click on view to see the order details and it retains this beautiful aesthetic and here's downloads I don't offer downloads but if I did I could have them right here here's contact info you're gonna be able to do whatever the heck you want to do here I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna unlock this for you it's gonna be super easy you're gonna be surprised hi my name is Adam from WPCrafter.com where I make WordPress tutorials like this for non-techies if you're new here consider clicking on that subscribe button click on the notification bell if you want to be alerted when I upload these types of videos. And this is actually the third video in a series. The first one, I showed you how to completely customize the checkout page of your store. Then I showed you how in the second video, how to completely customize the thank you page of your store. And this time we're digging deeper. We're going into that my account page right here. Now, when I show you how easy this is to do, you're gonna say, wow, I should have thought of that. Now, now for me, I'm going to be using the free Elementor page builder, but you could use any page builder that you have. So I'm just going to show you some little snippets of code to add, and then we're going to get to designing. So at that point, you can use your page building tool. So uh, this is where we're going to get to, but this is where we're going to start. So first, let's log into our WordPress site and here we are so we're going to need to find out just a little tiny bit of information and they're called endpoints so what an endpoint is is when your customer clicks on dashboard or orders or downloads those are called endpoints it's super easy and you can actually customize those if you didn't already know so i'm going to go ahead and click on woocommerce choose settings it's going to be underneath the advanced tab and i'll scroll down and it says right here account endpoints so what this means is for this page here's the URL it's my domain name slash my account but if I want someone to see the orders check it out it's going to change the URL and add that orders to the end so it's my account but when I click on orders you're gonna see now it says order so we just need to be aware of those endpoints when it comes time to start building links to where we want them to go Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna leave this endpoint page up. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna click on edit page, and I'm already on my WooCommerce, my account page. So I'm using the Astra theme, and I wanna set it up for page builders. So I need to scroll down, and there's some, uh, some options right here. Every theme's a little different. So you're gonna just wanna set it up for a page builder, and that means full width, get rid of the title, all that kind of stuff. So sidebar, I'll choose no sidebar, content layout, full width stretched, and I'm gonna disable the title. And then I'm gonna click on update. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is click on edit with Elementor, and so now, I'm going to be in the Elementor editor. Now what we're gonna to need to do is take this little WooCommerce shortcode. This right here tells WooCommerce to display all this information. We're gonna put that into our clipboard and I'm gonna go ahead and just delete that whole bit there. And next what I'm gonna do is a search for short code right here and we're gonna use the short code module and then I'm gonna go ahead and paste the short code in there. That's a better way of having this and I'll click on apply and you can see it's showing us all that kind of information now on this site I don't have Elementor Pro normally I do and what we need to do is take these two little lines of custom CSS and we need to add them to this page now if you're using Elementor Pro 
you would click right here on the module, click on advanced, and where it says custom CSS, you'd be able to copy and paste these entries here. But I wanted to do this intentionally for people that do not have Elementor Pro. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on update. I'm going to click on the hamburger icon, click on exit to dashboard. And then I'm going to click where it says my account and then I'm going to view the page. So now I'm just viewing the page again and you can see we have this edit with Elementor option. So where I'm going to add this custom CSS is in the customizer. But like I said, if I had Elementor Pro, I would just add it inside of that interface. So I'm going to click on customize and it's going to jump us inside of the customizer. Now this little bit of CSS is going to hide the navigation. And you're going to see that in a moment and then this little bit right here is going to make the area right here take up the full width. It's super easy. So I'm going to go ahead and copy these into my clipboard and oops, I'm going to go right here to additional CSS and I'm going to paste those in and you can see it got rid of the navigation which I wanted to get rid of and it made this bit of content take up the full width. Like I said, if you're using Elementor Pro, you just put it in there. So I'm going to click on publish and now I'm going to get out of here. And uh, now I'm going to click on edit with Elementor and we can start doing some really cool things. Okay, so I'm gonna click here, click on apply, and now you can see it's just that dynamic bit of information. And so now it's time to start designing this and putting our links in. So I first need a big kind of header hero thing that I wanna do. Now on this website, I have lots of different pages and they all have this same consistent header image right here where we have the page title and then a little bit of information and I want to keep it consistent. So this is a really cool feature in Elementor. Watch this. I'm going to click on edit with Elementor on this page and we're going to copy and paste that whole section from this page to the page I'm working on. I love this feature. So you can actually right click right there and do a copy and I already have Elementor open up here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose paste right here and then look it just copied and pasted the whole thing in so I can just drag and drop this up and now I have that beautiful uh, hero image where I can just go right here and start changing some of the text. Not feeling super inspired, I said my account and welcome to your account page. Now if you noticed the example I gave you right here, I am using Elementor Pro and they have some personalization options. So I was able to show the user's first name which is really cool. Uh, all right, so I have that there and that's looking good. So now what I need to do is start building out my menu. That's going to be easy. So right here I'll click on plus, I will click on plus, and I will add four different columns. You can see my columns right there. But it's a little wide for me. I like to control the width and have it be a little bit more narrow. So I'm going to go into the section settings right here and then there's an option for the content width. I'll make this probably 850 pixels wide. So you can see it's now a little bit more narrow which is exactly what I wanted. So I'm going to go and click on the dial pad and I will search for the icon box right here. Now it's probably going to prompt me to upgrade to the new icon library. This is an Elementor thing. Let me just go ahead and do that really quick on this site. This was with Elementor version 2.6. I have to click on upgrade and click on continue. It should kick me right back in there and I'm upgraded. It's a one time thing. Uh, anyways, all right, let me go here and click on apply. Now let's build out that menu system. So I'm going to do that search again for icon. There it is, icon box. And I'm going to drop that icon box right here. And uh, that's not looking how I quite want it, but that's okay. So right here, I'm going to say uh, orders or recent orders. There it is. And I'm going to get rid of this text. You can do whatever you want design wise. I'm just showing you guys how I did it. So I did that. I'll click on style. And for the spacing, you can adjust the spacing here. I think I tightened it up there a bit. And then I expanded where it says content and I I lowered out the spacing there so now it's kind of nice and tight. That looks fine. Uh, I probably want to change the color of the icon 
uh, to something that might match this blue, something a little deeper. Uh, there we go, that's fine. Uh, that looks good. And then what I'm gonna wanna do is style it a bit more. But what I'll do is I'll style the column. So I'll click right here to get into the column settings. And for the style, I'll click there. And for the background type, I'm gonna choose white. And then, you're not gonna see that, but then I'm gonna go down here to border and I'm going to put a box shadow in and you can see there it is, doesn't look that great. So I'm gonna click right here for the color and I'm gonna dial it down with this transparency dial. There we go, it's looking a little bit better there. Um, and you can see when I dial that down, this number decreases. That's good. I like to round out the corner some, so for border radius, I always like to go with five for some reason. So now, if I collapse this, you can see it's starting to look better. It's a little rounded, a little bit more friendly. Okay, so I wanna do some sp uh, spacing, play around with the spacing a bit, so I'll click on Advanced. And for margin, I'm gonna put 10. That's the space outside, so you can see how it kind of sucked it in a little bit. But I think I could use a little bit more spacing within the box. So that would be padding. I will do, let's try 20. Yeah, 20 looks fine. I think I'll go with 20. So let's go right here and see. Yeah, that looks fine. So we'll do that. And then what I do is, I'm a little lazy. So what I wanna do, if I wanna replicate this in these four right here, I just right click and duplicate this four times or three times, duplicate, duplicate. And then I, oops, duplicate. And then I delete these empty ones. I'll right click and then I will delete right click delete right click delete and there we have my future navigation I just need to click in each one and uh, change the label and change the icon so what I want to do now is lift this up and then we'll change that and get the links in and test it out so I'm gonna click right here for my section settings and the way we lift something up is we add what's called the negative margin so I'm gonna click on advanced and here's margin so I'm gonna click this this link right here to unlink it and then for the top, I think I'm gonna do maybe, let's try f minus 50. So I'm gonna put a minus. That doesn't look like enough at all. So it's probably 60, let's see. There's 60, 70, 70 looks right. Let's see, that looks fine. Actually, it might look a little tall, but that's okay. All right, so we have that in there. So now let's get our links in. So this can be our orders. And we can change the dash, the icon by clicking on it, choosing content, and then click right here where it says icon library, and we can choose another uh, icon. So if I did shop, here's my shopping cart, that's fine. And so now we have a shopping cart, and then right here, we can change this and make it downloads like that. Downloads, uh, this is fine. It doesn't really matter uh, what you choose because you're gonna wanna choose what you want. Uh, but then I'll change these labels real quick. Okay, so I just took a sec to change these labels. So now what we wanna do is make it so when someone clicks on one of these, it takes them to that piece of information. And that is where that endpoint comes in. So for recent orders, let me go back into my, re, my WooCommerce setting, there it is. So I'm gonna make the first one go to orders. So I'm gonna want to copy that into my clipboard. And then let's go back here. I'm gonna click right here where it says recent orders and there is an option to put a link and there'll be an option to put a link for each one of these. So right here, I will type uh, my account and let's see, it's gonna pull it up. I unfortunately have two my account pages. There we go. And it filled it out. It's my domain slash my account. And then there's a slash and that's where I want to paste in that slash orders just like that and that's perfect. So then I wanna click on downloads and I wanna do the same thing. I wanna go back here. I wanna find out what the endpoint is and that's downloads. So I'll put that into my clipboard and I'll go here and type my account like that and click there and paste it in 
just like that, and we'll want to do that for the rest of them. Okay, so now this right here, I want to style it up a little bit. This is this narrow uh, section. I, I want to match the narrowness and add a little bit of padding. So I'm going to go into that section's option right here, and I could put in 850, but since I it doesn't quite line up, actually it does look fine at 850, but it's a little too close to these buttons. So I'm going to go back in here and click on Advanced, and I'm going to add a bit of spacing above and below, and that's margin. So I'm going to add 70 pixels there. That's fine. And so now we have a bit of spacing. Okay, we're done actually, by the way. You would just keep adding your links to your endpoints, whatever you want. You can add links to anything you want. So now let's go ahead and get out of Elementor. And it's actually looking quite nice. So let's go here. And now I'm looking at the page. And here it is. Oh, I'll, I'll fix that transparent header thing in a moment. That's specific to the theme. But you can see here, if I click here, it's going to take me to my recent orders, which I don't have any recent orders. I can click here. It's going to take me to my downloads, which I don't have. Uh, so let me go ahead and just jump right back really quick and fix that transparent header. And then this tutorial is a wrap. So I'm going to scroll down and for the Astra theme, it says transparent header. I'm going to enable it. I'm going to click on update and that was easy, right? Now I'm going to click on view page and as they say, Viola, here it is, a totally custom my account page for WooCommerce that looks way better than it did just, what, 10 or 15 minutes ago. Now, obviously, you'll be able to do this a whole heck of a lot quicker than I am because you're not narrating it for someone. So I'm excited about this. Now, there's this little tiny bit of custom CSS. I will have a link in, down below to it. So if you're watching this on YouTube, it's in the video description box. If you're watching this on my website, it's just a copy and paste down below. You can add it to your theme and you are off to the races. Like I was saying earlier, if you had Elementor Pro, you could do some additional things. Uh, it's probably worth letting me just show you that right now. Um, so here is one of the things I did differently. You can see I add, added this personalization right here. Let me show you how that's done really quick. I'll go to edit with Elementor. Elementor Pro allows you to have uh, dynamic content. And so what dynamic content is, is if I want to say have some dynamic content inside of a heading, I'll just drag and drop my heading there and you can see it right here. And there's these options that say dynamic. Now when you click on it, it gives you all of these options of info to have be in here dynamically. So one of them is underneath site and then right here it says user info. So I click on user info and then when I click this again, I get to choose what user info do I want to add in here dynamically. First name, last name, email, whatever I want, I can add it dynamically. So I chose first name. And so now it's going to show me my first name. But I can click it again. Oops, I can click advanced, sorry, and add something before, like the word hello, and after, like how are you today? And you can also do a fallback if someone didn't put that in. So if you're interested in Elementor Pro, I'll have a link down below to that as well. Or you can visit wpcrafter.com slash Elementor and you can check it out. But that's just scratching the surface on what you can actually do with Elementor Pro. It's a really amazing tool. The Pro version uh, makes a lot of things easier, makes your website a lot more dynamic. But anyways, that's not what this video was about. It was about showing you how to customize your WooCommerce check, uh, not checkout page, your My Account page. Now I'll also link down below to the full tutorial on how to customize your checkout page for free, how to uh, customize your Thank You page as well, and that's a free tutorial and everything I use in it is free. Uh, guys, if you are a WooCommerce shop owner, this is the channel for you. Smash the thumbs up button if you found value in this. Subscribe and click on that notification bell because I'm just going to feed you useful things like this to make your, your, uh, your e-commerce web store make more money, look more branded, look more personal, and it's just going to end up doing a lot better. Thanks for watching this video. If you have a question, ask down below. I'll see you in the next video.